Hello people of the internet. In this video I'm going to cover how to create or how to render um, a wireframe for your model. Um, <clears throat> so first let me just kind of explain what I have set up here in my scene. I have my goblin guy that I've created. created this guy a few years ago. Um, he is fully textured, he's got a specular map, he's got a normal map, he's got a transparency map, so he's pretty complete with the exception of, you know, he doesn't have a rig. Um, in the background I have a, a sphere with a surface shader applied to it, and in that surface shader is a ramp, and this is just so um, I'm not rendering in, in black. There's not a black background. There'll be some color in the background. Um, I have a simple three-point lighting system. So if I go to my outliner, window outliner, um, and look at my lights, I have three spotlights. Um, they're set to a quadratic decay rate, and they each have a slightly different color, a very light color, just to... Um, spice up the render a little bit um, and I'm rendering a 2k square um, my camera um, has a bookmark set on it so if I move around my scene in my perspective view I can always go back to view um, predefined bookmarks or I'm sorry bookmarks camera view one and it'll just jump back to my render um, position um, and you do that just by going to View, Bookmarks, Edit Bookmarks, and click New Bookmark. And that will set a bookmark to wherever your camera is then. And, uh, and then you can just always jump back to your um, bookmark. And the result I have is here in Photoshop. Just a simple render, nothing too crazy. Um, I'm going to do a wireframe render, and we can uh, put that right on top of this model. And, and get some very cool looking effects. It is a low poly model, so I, you know, ideally if you do a model like this that's very low poly, you want to show off the wireframe, you want to show off your topology and show that you're, you know, you're a good modeler. You can model um, with optimized geometry. Um, and, you know, this guy does have a pretty cool normal map applied to him, so even though he is a very low poly model, um, he does have uh, some cool details and um, you know if I zoom in here you can see a lot of wrinkles and things like that from the normal map. So we'll go back to my bookmark under bookmarks camera one. Now I'll be honest I haven't done a wireframe render in a while so I'm hoping this goes off without a hitch but I might have a couple hiccups just because um, you know, I may not remember every single step involved, but I'm pretty sure I do. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have Mental Ray turned on. Um, this process does use Mental Ray, so um, it's very important for you to turn on Mental Ray. So we're going to do that by going to our window, window menu, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and go all the way to the bottom here and you're going to see maya to mr.mll and make sure if you want to keep mental ray on all the time click auto load i always render with mental ray anymore so i just keep that on and um and loaded will just load it for this this one time so make sure you have those turned on um <clears throat> the next thing i want to do is create a render layer um, and I don't want the background in the render layer. I just, I don't even need my lights in the render layer. Um, I just want my object. So I'm going to go to my channel box and I will cover, I'll probably cover render layers or, and render passes in a lot more detail in the future, but this is just going to be like a quick overview so we can quickly render this wireframe. Um, so I'm going to go to my render tab and just with my object selected, just the model that I want to render, I'm going to click 
this button all the way to the right that says create new layer and assign selected objects. So what that's going to do is create a render layer for me with only my selected object on there. So I can double click this guy and I'll name this render layer wireframe. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is apply a shader. And I know it's black, that's fine. That's just because there's no lights on this render layer. So while we have this render layer active, we're only going to see the objects we have in that render layer. Um, but if you want to see your object, you can just turn off lights, hit six on your keyboard, and that'll just show you the textured mode. We're going to apply a different material to this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's going to show up black for the most part anyway, um, if I can remember to do this correctly. All right, so it doesn't really matter what shader I apply to this. Um, it can uh, help and it can give you a little bit of a, a cool look, but um, and I'll show you that. But I'm basically going to apply my wireframe to the render I already have. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just assign a Lambert. So assign favorite material, Lambert. And I want to go to the shading group for this material. First, just for the sake of, of playing around with the settings, um, let's change the color. So I'm going to go to uh, Material Attributes. I'll go to the Lambert 3, and let's make this kind of a white color. Um, and increase the incandescence just a tad too. And then I want to go to the Shading Group. So again, I'll go to Material Attributes, and I want to click on this Lambert 3 SG. Um, and I want to go to the Mental Ray tab, Contours, and I want to enable contour rendering. So this first setting here is going to be the color of my wireframe. So I'm going to make my wireframe black. Um, and then we have the width of the wireframe. For now, I'm just going to leave it at 1.25 um, just so we can see the result. Um, so that's all set. The other thing I need to do is come in <clears throat> and go to my Features tab in my uh, Render Settings. Make sure you have Mental Ray enabled. Go down the Contours, and I want to click Enable Contour Rendering. Um, by default, your oversample should be 1, so I'll put that back at 1. And I want to render around Silhouette and all poly faces. So Silhouette, in areas where, like you see right here, where we don't really see that wireframe, the silhouette, if we have that on, it'll make sure that there's a wireframe going all the way around our, our model, not just around the polygons. And I also want to click around poly faces, like so. So um, with those settings set, I can open my render window and click render. Now it didn't work. If you're using Maya 2014 um, or earlier or later, I'm sorry, that should have worked fine. However, we're using Maya 2015. Maya 2015 has made uh, quite a few changes and this is one of the um, kind of little quirks of it that just isn't working the way it used to. Um, if we go over to our quality tab in our render settings, Maya 2015 has this new um, unified sampling mode and our old contour shaders just don't work well with this unified sampling mode. So what I want to do is switch this to legacy sampling mode and that will render it um, using the old sampling mode and not the unified sampling mode. So once we change that, if you're in, if you're in uh, Maya 2015, if you're in 2014, it should have worked fine. So you wouldn't have to change that. Um, and re-render, it'll render, and um, our wireframe is a post-process, so it's going to kind of pop in at the end, like, like so. Um, but we have a wireframe. It's a little pixelated, um, and it's thin. So there are some changes I want to make to this. 
Um, the first is in our shading group where we enabled our contour renderer. I want to come in and I want to increase the width of our wireframe. So rather than 1.25, I'm going to set that to 2. And we will do a, another render. So that's a little bit thicker. I could probably go um, just a tad thicker still, but I think I'm going to, to sort of leave it the way it is. Maybe we'll go to 2.25 and see how that looks. Okay, so it's a little thicker. Um, it still looks very uh, pixelated though and very jagged. And that's basically because of the anti-aliasing quality is not very high. So to change that, we need to go back to our render settings. So I'll go back to my features tab and come down to my over sample. So if I increase this to two and we'll do a render. So it's getting a little uh, a little sharper, a little more alias, anti-aliased. Let's go ahead and bring it up to something like four. So now we're starting to get really smooth lines. I can probably increase my filter support here as well, and that will help get rid of some of those artifacts. So let's bring that up to two. This is a fairly quick render, so um, these small settings aren't really going to change too much, um, add too much render time. Um, let's go ahead and bring our oversample up one more time to something like six. So a little longer render time, not too bad though, um, and we're getting a decent looking wireframe. Now, if you want to render this with um, with the material showing under it, so if I go back to my Lambert 3 and say um, drop the incandescence back down and maybe drop the material back down and re-render, you can uh, get a result with some shading underneath. I turn my incandescence to too low, I believe. Um, also, there's no lights in my scene, so that's that's kind of an issue. Um, but basically, I want to apply my wireframe on top of the render I already have in Photoshop. So um, to do that, I want to hide the source, so I don't want to see the material. And this is what I mean by it doesn't matter what material you apply, because you can always hide the source. So I'm going to click Hide Source, and then I have Flood Color. Since my wireframe is black, I want to make my flood color white. And that will flood the entire background with white. And there we go. Now it is a post process again. So you're going to see it render the whole thing and then your wireframe will sort of pop in at the end. So before I, um, I render this and I'm, I'm ready to kind of apply it to my, um, my object in Photoshop, I want to make sure that I have my camera setting uh, bookmarked. So I want to go back to uh, bookmarks, camera view, and make sure I'm in the right view. And, uh, and then I'll just do a quick re-render. Okay, so now I can take this image, just right here in my render view, I can go to File, Save Image, and um, I have my other image saved into uh, my Goblin folder. So. Um, I'll save this also as a PNG and I'll name it Goblin Wire. Okay, so now I can go into Photoshop and I want to place in that image. So I'll go to File, Place Embedded, Goblin Wire, PNG, open that up and apply it. So, um, so there's our wireframe. Now we do have a few minor issues with this. Um, one being there's like a little white edge around our, um, around our wireframe. And that's because our wireframe by, by default has this alpha um, applied to it. So it's, it's kind of um, 
showing, you know, it's got a transparency basically. So I can I can fix that by just setting my um, my blending mode to multiply, and it'll kind of get rid of that white edge. Um, another way you can get rid of that, um, if you want, is to try doing. Let's go back to normal. We'll go to um, image. If I can remember where the setting is, I can't ever quite remember. Um, we're going to go to layer, matting, defringe. And uh, just one pixel should work. And that will also get rid of that fringe, that little white fringe on the end. Now, if you do at this point want a different color wireframe, I can always uh, do something like a hue saturation. So just hit control U to get hue saturation and colorize. And then I can always, you know, if I want to make this a different color wireframe, maybe a dark, a dark gray or blue or something like that. I can do that that way. I can even make it white if I want. Um, so that's a cool way to make your wireframe different colors. So that is wireframe rendering in Maya using mental ray and contour shaders. Uh, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm always posting new videos, and if you have any suggestions um, for topics you would like me to cover, please don't hesitate um, to let me know in the comments. Thank you.